logical thing. I mean, you don't want to get... He, he, he sh by no means should quit fighting. He's still elite, you know? Um, but, yeah, I, I was... I was I want to see him back in title contention. He will be. And he's probably just got to do a couple more wins. It might take him a couple years, but I could see him beating Yoel the next time. I mean, I could I could see that happening. I mean, Yoel, Yoel. I mean, for a forty-year-old man. I mean, oh, speaking of this, let me let me just side go off, off the rails real quick. How long do you think Yoel will keep fighting? Like, when do you think he'll start to deteriorate? Fifty, fifty-five. That's a good question, man. Because <laughs> that, I mean, it's a great question because he, clearly his chin is phenomenal. He took some really yeah. flush shots from from Luke um, and wasn't even phased. I mean, same thing with with Robert Whitaker. Yeah. Um, he's never. I mean, he's never been knocked out, right? Have we ever uh, even seen him rock? I think so. Yeah, he got rocked by Tim Tim Kennedy. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. He did get rocked by Tim Kennedy. Um, um, he did get knocked out. Um, by Rafael Calvacante and Strike Force, he he did get knocked out. Okay, okay, but I mean, like, all the signs of age is that you would expect to to slow someone down and haven't seemed to touch him. Like he's no. he's so athletic. He's very fast, obviously. Um, yeah. He's his output's not the highest, but it's also like it's fine, you know. Um, yeah. He can he 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 can clearly explode and burst and still win fights. Right. Um. I don't know. That's a great question. He could easily go for another four or five years before yeah. we start to see this, a significant downturn from him. And I do think um, it's it's very it's like yeah. Um, I, I mean, it may just be great genetics, but um, if he if he has at some point in the past um, used steroids, that does extend your career uh, right. well, well past when you stop using. So. Um, I mean, maybe that's not the case with Yol, but his, I mean, it, um, he's he's clearly going strong. Right. Yeah. So Curtis Blades fought Mark Hunt. Uh, what do you think about that fight? Yeah, so um, that was great. And uh, also, um, by the way, I just started recording like five minutes ago. Are you serious? Yes. <clears throat> uh, so what do we got to do? Well... Uh, I guess we gotta um, reintroduce the podcast. Welcome to the Anime Outsiders Podcast with Andrew Pearson and AJ. Welcome to the MMA Outsiders. Uh, I'm Andrew Pearson. I'm AJ Hare. And uh, you're listening to the 16th episode of the podcast. Uh, we're talking UFC 221, um, and uh, we're already rec we're already supposed to be recording. And as it turned out, I, I wasn't wasn't actually recording. So yeah, uh, the, the the most brilliant, witty conversation we've ever had uh, has been lost. Yep. Um, and I just want to apologize to everyone for that. Yep, and uh, my wit my wittiness is gone, so we're we're just gonna have to deal with uh, one word answers. So so let's try this. Go ahead and ask me a question about the fight. So uh, so AJ, um, mm -hmm. what did you think about the Luke Rockhold Yo Romero fight? It's good. Um, what did you think about Yo Romero cornering Luke Rockhold after he knocks him out cold and giving him a gigantic kiss? Mm, kind of weird. Was kind of weird, wasn't it? Yep. See, that's what happens when you don't record. Anyway, uh, anyway, but yeah, yeah, it was very awkward. Uh, the fight was fantastic. Uh, Luke, we were talking about Luke's range. Um, he looked really good. Shots. He looked very good. Um, uh, but <clears throat> Yoel seemed to get the job done. Um, he, he's very, very, very tactical in a lot of ways. Yoel's brain—it's almost like his brain fires at a different level. Uh, even with the Chris Weidman knockout, he just out of nowhere, boom, saw him coming in. He just He's uh, very intelligent with his fight. Um, he's even, I know we don't, I know we've talked about this before, and, and I know a lot of people don't like him for it, 
but he's even he's even like intelligent when it comes to bending rules and shit. Like he's yep. he is the quintessential uh, competitor of the age, finding any and every way to get an advantage inside, outside, whatever you know. Fucking pouring water all over his body, not pretending not to understand the ref, sitting on the stool, trying to, you know. And those are tactics people use. I mean, um, there's a famous story. Ali got rocked. I can't remember which fight it was. Ali got rocked, and uh, Angelo Dundee cut his gloves and said, "Oh, look, you ripped yep. his gloves. We gotta, we gotta rewrap them." And, and you know, they gave him some time, and he went back and won the fight. I, yeah, I mean. Wow. Okay, so he, he missed weight for this fight, right? Yeah. Which which I think was perfect. I, I remember hating Noah Mel and now I love him because yeah. he just he just skirts the edge of the rules. But also, fuck your interim titles. Yes. They don't they don't matter, clearly, because Yoel Romero didn't yeah. get an interim title, but Dana White confirmed he would be getting the next title shot. Um he thought he broke his leg afterwards, but he didn't apparently. They went to the hospital, um just for clarification yeah. for anyone who doesn't know didn't know that yet. Um, and he's fine. He'll be fine in a couple weeks. Yeah. Um, what do you think about him getting the next title shot after missing weight? Absolutely. I mean, fucking whatever. He not he just knocked out the the uh, former champion. He's knocked him the fuck out in the third round. Uh, did not put on a shitty performance. He only missed weight by a couple pounds. First of all, this wasn't even supposed to be him and Yoel fighting. Right. Luke and Yoel fighting. Right. So I know it was four weeks out. He did have enough time to prepare and, and and make weight. But fucking yeah, you're right. Fuck the interim title, dude. Fuck all that shit. I mean, I'm getting sick of all these interim titles. Why? Why does it, it? Why does it have to be for an interim title? Why couldn't it just be a fight for the number one contender spot? Well, that's basically what it was because he's still going to get that that title fight against. But why uh, make Walker. a belt? It's, it's all because, these belts are because for the fans. No, it is. It's so they can put a, a damn belt on the poster. And and why does it really does it really make a big difference? Does it? No. Doesn't? I think if you're gonna make an inner belt, then you make, need to make it look different at least. Make it look a little bit different than the fucking actual belt. If you're gonna waste money on fucking fake ass belts, then you know whatever. Anyway. Yeah. At least ha- you can have a tiered system. You can have the main yeah. belt and you know like the three interim belts beneath them. Make it like a silver. Make it a silver belt, and then you got like <laughs> a, a bronze belt. <laughs> You know, both, it's bullshit. And, and, and if you're, if you're going to start being handed out belts, why don't we just do Grand Prix shit? Like, like these two doing fucking Strike Force. But that would actually be fun. That would so, be fucking dope, right? So they're not going to do that. Yeah, they're not going to do that because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> fuck, fuck that, man. I fucking, like, the UFC is getting get on my nerves so much since for, the Fertitas left. Um, it's driving me crazy. Well, it's all it's all short-term decisions, right? Like, just... Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All short-term decisions. Fucking makes no sense. Conor McGregor. I don't even get started. Anyways, Curtis Blades, Mark Hunt. How do you feel about that? Uh, <laughs> well, well, hold on. Well, oh, yeah, okay. Um, I just want to say, um, like, it's also Yoel Mel's first time missing weight. Um, yeah. So, like, yeah, absolutely give him a title shot. Um, yeah. Because it's not a consistent problem for him. I want to see him look to a five and fight John Jones. Dude, what, what do you think about Luke Rockle versus John Jones? Because John Jones wins. I mean, probably, but but that's a pretty good fight, especially the, this version of Rockhold, right? Yeah, it'd be a great fight, um, but I think, yeah, I think John Jones, John Jones, I, I mean, I wonder how they size up together, because I don't think Luke's, Luke's, uh, what, walks around, what, like, Luke's two something? Three. Luke, Luke is 6'3", he's, he's, he's been talking about moving, moving up in weight for a long time. Sure. Um, he needs to move up, man. If yeah. he fought John Jones, I mean, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of cool, because, you know, Daniel... He's moving up to heavyweight for the next couple fights, and I know he's quitting. He's retiring in 2018, 2019. Um, that would be kind of an interesting thing. It would be. I mean, oh! Go ahead. Let, let me... Okay. Never mind. I'll, I'll ask you this at the end. You just got to remind me, because it, it, in my head, like, it's it makes sense what I was thinking about. Okay. I'll it has ask. nothing to do with what we're talking about right now. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll ask you at the end, but I would All love right. to see Rockwell fight John Jones. I mean, so he looked. We we talked about this in the in the in the last segment, but he looked really good against Yoel Romero for like you know the better part of three rounds. And it, and you were mentioning it was when Yoel was really coming after him that Rockwell looked 
look lost. Like, he's just backing up. He wasn't counterpunching. Yeah, he wasn't countering. He wasn't finding the opening. I mean, which is understandable, dude, because if that, if that was happening to me, I mean, that's that's fucking terrifying, you know? No, Especially it is. fucking Yolo, Yolo Romero. But uh, Luke Rockhold is not me, and that should have been part of his fucking training camp, especially being at AKA. Well, he's clearly... You know, no, he's actually, he was actually training with um, Henry Hoops, which is probably why his boxing looks so much better. But, oh yeah, yeah, his boxing was great. Yeah, but but it's yeah, clear yeah. like like he he ha- he still has those holes, and he yes. still has that chin, man. Yes. Like if you hit him, he just he doesn't he doesn't take it well. Um, and I mean, I don't know. I, I would love to, I would still love him see him against John Jones though. Um, <laughs> Do you because, think it's like an ego thing? Um, getting knocked out, I don't think is an ego thing. I no, 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 no. Like ego. like like when he doesn't take the punch as well. Think um, like mentally. You, you like, I, like, I, I think it's. I don't think it has to do with ego. I think it's think just it's like he doesn't. Gym. I don't think he he responds well. Um, either. Maybe, maybe I just don't like Luke. I mean, I, I, it's easy I enough to like Luke. Like, I think he can't. I, I think he doesn't. I don't think. I think he believes that he can't believe he got punched. That's what I think. Oh, like like he's just <laughs> he yeah. just can't believe. Like I, I think it's, he's like in, in disbelief that he actually got hit. Bruce Lee person. apparently used to have that reaction. Yeah, like he just look at you when you punched him, like you know, like in, in in fury uh, that that you dared to hit him, and yeah. it's like we're sparring or you know whatever. Yeah, we're in a fight. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> that the main event. I want to rewatch it. It was it was awesome. It was everything mm-hmm. I wanted it to be. But yeah, the, so the um, the co main event uh, was uh, Mark Hunt versus uh, Curtis Blades. And uh, that was a pretty great fight too. Mark Hunt rocked him um, hard in the first round. Uh, just caught him stepping in with that with a right hand that staggered him, and then followed up. Had like a knockdown for a second, and then Blades ducked in, got a takedown, and that was pretty much the rest of the fight. He just kept taking it down over and over. Um, yeah. Hey, is there's an echo in the back? Can you hear hear the echo? Um, oh, there it went. There it went. Okay, it's fine. Okay. But uh, but what did you what did you think about Curtis Blades' performance? Like, how do you how do you think he stacks up as a contender? In the he's a fence, he, he's a fantastic uh, fighter. Um, what's he ranked right now? Oh man, I think he was ranked eighth or something like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he he's definitely deserving of the top ten. I think he's you know he's still young. He's got a few more fights before he's like title contention ready. I think, but. Um, yeah, I think he did fantastic against Mark Hunt. I mean, he did the right thing. <laughs> like, he really did. Don't stand and fucking bang with Mark Hunt. Jesus Christ, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Like, use your strengths, people. Like, what are you doing? Use your <laughs> strengths. Like, Jesus. If the guy's a fucking striker, why would you strike with him? He's got the best, probably the most highlight reel knockouts in mean, his entire career. Yeah. Why would you stand and strike with him if you're a Juco <laughs> national champion? He got fucked up in the first round. Why was that not your fucking game plan in the first place? It's a good question. You wanted to see what it feel like? You want to see what it feels like to get fucking punched by him? See if you can take it? Well, you can't. So thank you. It drives me crazy. Anyway. <laughs> so I think that is going to remain an issue for him, but he has a hell of a chin. Um, he said afterwards that... Um, they, someone asked him, like, did you learn anything new about yourself? He's like, no, nah, I already got punched by Ngannou. Um, and in, he's like, oh, no disrespect to Mark Hunt, but Ngannou hits harder. Um, and so, yeah, like, I already knew I had a chin. Um, and uh, all that quote made me want to see is Mark Hunt versus Francis Ngannou. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. So we can settle this harder puncher business once and for all. I'm terrified of that fight because I think Mark Hunt is going to die in that fight. Like, he's been punched yeah. so many times. Like, I don't want to see that. It, well, it, yeah, I, I, part of me doesn't, like, even if he it, so even if he somehow knocked out Francis Ngannou, I wouldn't want to see that either. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's yeah. one of those fights, like, I kind of want to see it, but then I don't want to see, I, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with the outcomes. Right. By the way. Well, um, I think- I think it would be kind of cool if, if he did fight Francis and Mark Hunt turned into, a, like, a grappler. I mean, have we ever seen him shoot a takedown? I don't think I've ever seen it. Mark Hunt will never will never do that. Wait, Does maybe. Does he train? Maybe. Maybe he has. Does he train his grappling at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he clearly does. Uh, he, he's, his counter-wrestling... I mean, it, it, in bursts, it looked pretty good against Curtis Blades, but obviously wasn't enough. 
Um, well, fucking um, Chris Blades. I mean, he's he's so good. You know, he's a Nash, judo juco national champ. You know, I mean, that's that's legit. Even though it's junior college, it's still legit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, yeah. the juco. That's the sport where you grab people by their geese and toss them on the heads, right? Yeah, no, that's it. You're right. It's Ronda Rousey is a juco. Oh, juco, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's what I thought. Ronda Rousey. Juco bronze medalist in the Olympics. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> um, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like sambo. Well, it's kind of like sambo, but it's it, juco's uh, juco's more oriental. You know? Okay. Okay. So yeah. if sambo were easy, it would be called juco. Yeah, if Sambo was easy, it'd be called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Oh, oh, right, right, sorry. Yeah. That was, that was what the teacher said. <laughs> Did you, dude, you remember Ben, speaking of Ben, shout out to Ben Pittman from Perth, by the way, is one of our buddies. Oh, mutual group. friend, yeah, Ben Yeah. Pittman. Do you remember he used to get mad at people for calling, the, like, a, a Asian culture Oriental? Which is true, because he was like, that's not Oriental, Oriental's from the Orient, it's Turkey. Oh, really? Yeah, it's not, I mean, like, I Asian, that's, that's Asian's fair. not Oriental, necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of an out, that's kind of a dated term, anyway. But isn't it right? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, yeah. Anyway, hey, let's uh, curse blade. So back to that thing. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he he was doing so good with his grappling and his takedowns. I think he did the perfect game plan to get the win. Um, Mark Hunt. Uh, he's kind of on his last leg, man. I mean, I I I, I don't I don't know. How much longer he's got? Maybe this is the last fight in his right? contract. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, if he retired, but I doubt it. Man. No, he's well, he, a, he said he's going to travel the world and fight. So, I mean, do you want to see him in? in do you want to see him fight uh, a, a revitalized, um, a rejuiced Mirko Kokop in Japan? I want to see him um, fight kickboxing. I don't really care to see him in MMA anymore. I mean, I think I think you know the UFC's got this boxing thing. Supposedly Zufa boxing thing happening. I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing that shit either. You know, oh, yeah. I wouldn't mind Mark seeing would some, of these, that. some of these UFC fighters that have hands like Ngannou do some of that Zufa boxing. Fuck the fuck the MMA. I want to see him fucking be heavyweight Zufa champ or whatever the fuck they want to call it. Nah, uh, whatever. I don't. I don't, don't really want to see Zufa get into boxing, but it is what. Oh, it it's is. gonna be terrible. It's gonna be absolutely ridiculous. But maybe. Hey, you know what? You know what I think would be cool is if if they're gonna do that, at least do it with like MMA gloves or some shit like that. Like oh, yeah, like no. the, okay. the that, way that that would uh, be genuinely cool. That would be cool. Like in the cage, MMA gloves, still a little bit of clinching. Like change the rules up a little bit. Yeah. That would be fucking dope. I would watch the shit, and I think a lot of people would watch that. They like, already have um, it going on with Muay Thai. Muay Thai with MMA gloves in a cage. Oh yeah, and that 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 shit is dope. That is awesome. It is amazing to watch. And it's it's not you're still able to clinch you're still able to press uh, yep. you can do like standing standing submissions I think right um, maybe John Wayne Parr did a little bit of that it's yeah. awesome um, and and yeah no I would love to see more of that um, maybe like a, uh, maybe like a, um, it's not Sanda what is it called uh, shoot no, San- no. Sancho yeah Sancho maybe like a Sancho boxing um, a hybrid where you can you can yeah. hit throws. Yeah, that would be um, that would be awesome. I mean, yeah, it's not gonna happen, but the, but that would be that would be great. That would be fucking cool. If I've always just, wanted to see boxing go back to like the roots of boxing, where it's not just striking, boxing with a little bit of clinching, trips, you know, uh, standing, standing, uh, standing locks, things like that. So even well, with, even without any of that, just boxing with like with like a, 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 um, allowing clinch fighting and MMA gloves. Like pride gloves, where you know the yeah. hands curve, um, yeah. you know, so they're not Dude, that would be poking a each other in the eyes all the time. Brilliant sport. I mean, everybody would love to watch that. Yeah, everyone would boxing love to watch. Boxing heads it. would be like, "This is boxing," but actually, they just shut the fuck up. But here, here we yeah. go. It, um, uh, McGregor versus Mayweather rematch in uh, in pride gloves in in, bo- in MMA gloves. Oh, dude, that would be like a dream. But boxing, you know, can can they can they clinch? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, oh, dude. That would be like I would. Uh, that would be like my favorite fight of all time if that, if that ever happened. Yeah, it would be. I mean, that's the only rule set where like it, it, you could even say like it makes any kind of sense. Because like I love MMA, but I, you know, shit. I would I would stop watching if that was like if that's how if there was a sport that did that. I would fucking fuck MMA. I'd rather watch that. So I, I could give a shit about the wrestling part. So you know? yeah, all, all we need is all we need is an infusion of uh, some venture capital, and uh, and we can start a promotion for this. Uh well let's uh let's do it uh, let's make a pitch bro yeah.
Let's put it those together. Rothschild bankers. We'll just, we'll just, what we'll do is we'll just have this podcast audio in its entirety. Just email it to everyone yeah. we know that has any money. And, and just, just start uh, going. Well, yeah, that's yeah, and then and midway just, through. I mean, this is the most convincing pitch we could possibly make, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, and, until I start going, the Earth is flat. The Earth is flat. NASA's a fraud. Blah 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 blah. Okay. Still, okay, Eddie Bravo. <laughs> do, you think, do you think they'll still uh, take our uh, take our pitch? Oh, for sure, for sure. Especially oh, if we okay. say things like uh, things like um, um, uh, filtered water is unhealthy. It's unnatural. I think everyone should should drink raw water, just raw sewage water. And say um, no to vaccines. Yeah, say vaccines no to vaccines. Kill. No, Silicon Valley loves that. So yeah, you know. Okay, good, awesome, awesome. Science is science is not reliable. Is that, is that something that that they like? Well, you don't want to just say it quite like that. Oh, okay. What do you want to say? Like, um, uh, but you just want to point out like specific things where um, you know science has made advancements, but um, but like pretend that those advancements are wrong and evil. Yeah. You know, I, I try to get into I try to get into the conspiracy theory of the moon landing. I try to research it, um, and it's still I can't get into it. I can't <laughs> like I got want to I want to be a skeptic with the moon landing. You want to be a non-believer? Yeah, like I want to be a non-believer specifically with the moon landing. I want to be like. But you just like, don't have enough bullshit. faith. Is that what you're telling me, Adrian? No, it's just like you don't have enough the faith evidence, to be a non-believer. The evidence or the questions that people have, it's just so stupid. It's like, see, look at the reflection of this guy's visor. It's clearly <laughs> a guy there, and you can kind of see him, but he doesn't have a backpack on. I think so. That could be a guy with the stage light, probably, but maybe not. It's, that's how that's what it's like, and I'm just I can't handle it. There's a there's a Bigfoot documentary on Netflix. I want to see if I can find it. Um, it's 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 the most amazing thing. Like it's like uh, it's like if Dwight Schrute was hunting Bigfoot, okay. but but in real life. Oh um, wow! I gotta see that. Yeah, that's uh, hilarious. It, it, it was genuinely <laughs> it's genuinely the funniest. Uh, it's called Discovering Bigfoot, and it's gen- genuinely like the funniest. Uh, intro I've ever seen. The guys literally, you follow the guys. He like jumps from behind bushes and like runs uh, like over uh, like oh obstacles. Oh my god! It's literally uh, uh, it's it's amazing. Um, and have, he, and he have, gets he gets like three yeah. PhDs to come out with them into the woods, and he's like, look at how all these trees are cut off at like six feet tall, like like they're all broken off at the same height. He's like, isn't that isn't that suspicious? And, and it's just like they're like, yeah, I, I guess. Dude, I saw I saw this thing about okay. Speaking of that, I saw this, speaking about people that want to believe whatever they fucking want to believe. There was a, a episode of Catfish. If you're not familiar with Catfish, it's about these guys that um, they go searching for other people that have been talking to people online, and they want to find out if they're real people or they're who they say they are, or whether they're not. And this guy was convinced that he was talking to Katy Perry for like six years, never seen her, nothing. He went so far and made her like an engagement ring, like what? at twenty five percent of his his uh, savings. Yeah, crazy, right? They find her using her email. It is really easy. Like you just gotta look it up. I don't see why people just don't do it themselves. But they found they found her. She was in England with some other girl, and then he was so convinced that it was still Katy Perry all the way up to the point that they come face to face with her and confront her. And she admits to being that person on the other end, he's like, ah, this is just some shit Katie would do. Send me a, send me through a loop. Wow. Send me through a loop. Yeah, yeah, it was fucking crazy. But that's how it is, man. People believe what they want to believe. And, um, you know, I believe that, um, that the next UFC event is going to be decent because we got Cowboy fighting Yancey Medeiros. Is that the next one? Yeah. All right. Finally, you get a decent one. Um, yeah. I mean, actually, I, I thought this. I thought that the last night's was actually turned. It, it was my money's worth, and from for my money. It was um, really good, man. But I mean, it, was, uh, it, but, was, it was surprising. Yeah. yeah, we've got uh, we've got Cowboy versus Yancey Medeiros. That's awesome. Oh, before we move on from UFC two twenty one completely, I want to give a shout out to uh, a couple people. Israel Adesanya, the style bender, made his debut. Um, the cage was, pisser. Uh, what's that? The cage pisser. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what that was about. Um, it, but I mean, Nigerian-born New Zealander, um, the style bender. 
he's probably the the best kickboxer to ever enter the the UFC. Mm-hmm. Um, and his performance wasn't like he didn't knock him out with like a wheel kick or anything, but it was just a spe- just picked him apart in the second round. He fought off a bunch of takedowns in the first round. Um, clearly, extremely athletic, very raw yet, but um, I mean, he's one to watch at middleweight. Um, and then just destroyed him in the second round. Just clinically um, took him to pieces. Um, so I mean, he's one of the one of the very best kickboxers in the world. Um, uh, Patrick Wyman, uh, analyst for uh, Deadspin, called him. Uh, he said that um, you know Michael Venom Page. Yes. He said Michael Venom Page is a homeless man's version of Israel Adesanya. Oh, wow. That's so, interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been posting his highlights on Midnight Mania for years. So, I would be remiss years. Well, it's like as long as I've been doing the column. Like a, a year and a half now. Um, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention um, Israel Adesanya. It, he's in the UFC now. He's going to watch the style bender. Uh, he's going to be... I mean, he, he may not be able to hang with the top wrestlers of the division yet, but he's extremely athletic. He's six foot four. Um... He's gonna pick it up. I mean, he's already picking it up pretty quickly, and um, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna have some spectacular knockouts and fights. Damn. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, he's already he's already twelve and zero. Yeah, he's twelve and zero in MMA. Um, I mean, obviously, he hasn't faced like elite elite competition, but um, hopefully, they'll step him up kind of slowly, um, allow him to kind of build his his uh, his resume, um, and yeah. Uh, I'm hoping we'll, someday we'll see him against uh, Robert Whittaker. Yeah, that'd be dope. So, uh, moving on to our UFC fight night, uh, Cowboy versus Medeiros, we have our boy Derek Lewis as well. Yes, um, Derek we Lewis. We need to get an interview with him, man. He, that would be something we could probably do in the studio, too. Yeah, I mean, he lives he lives probably 10 minutes from me. So. Yeah, he lives down the street from you. And I, I've never met the guy. Um, we, I mean... Yeah, he trains at, at uh, Houston Muay Thai, um, where I used to train before I, like, banished off the map and went back to college. Well, he also um, he also used to train at Four Ounce. Yeah, which is Four Ounce is, like, again, like, ten minutes down the road from me. So, yeah, we got to we gotta see if we can... we got to see if we can get an interview with, with Derek Lewis, um, the Black Beast. He's he's awesome. Um, his social media is... you got to yeah, follow it. one of the it. best. Um, and, yeah, he's looking to get back on track. Um, I mean, he, he fought Mark Hunt... Um, last and uh, and lost um, Mark Hunt is just such a seasoned striker was able to kind of outlast him down the stretch and pick him apart had some like back or like neck issues um, Derek Lewis so hopefully he kind of got those sorted out um, but I mean if he beats if he beats Marcin Tavura that would put him in, in position for I mean potentially for um like a, a, a you know a top contender fight, uh, Francis yeah. Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. I mean, two guys that hit really hard. Um, that would be kind of a fight that uh, that a lot of people want to see. Um, man, Marcin Tabura last seen fighting Fabricio Verdum, and he was pretty good account of himself. Like it was a high volume, high paced fight, and Verdum kind of edged him out. I thought with the experience. But uh, at times he looked really good um, for, for stretches of that fight. Um, and, uh, I mean, so that this should make this one this one entertaining. Over three rounds, I feel like I feel like I got to go with Derek Lewis, but it should be interesting. Yeah, um, uh, I'm just going to go with Derek Lewis just because of the, uh, the hometown um, loyalty. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, completely biased. Completely not I'll based on that any too. any amount of of logic or reason. <laughs> just completely emotional. I'm, I feel like the Philadelphia Eagles burning my house, burning my town down after we won. What, what the fuck? Did you see those? Did you see oh those yeah, I saw those. Yeah. I don't think it would have fucking mattered if they won or lost. I think they just like riot. Some it's people redi- just like to watch crazy. the world burn. Oh my god. Yeah. No, what that the was wild. Fuck? Do you see the, yeah. the, the, like, on top of the, the awning that collapsed? Yeah! And it's, then it's people just crazy. running through the streets with, like, pieces of the awning? Yeah, they're nuts. It's crazy. <laughs> it's fucking nuts. But, yeah, luckily we, we live in Houston. Anyways. So, yeah, Derek Lewis, man. Uh, what about... We also have Tiago Ta- Ta- Alves on that card as well. Um, he's yeah. kind of on the last leg of his career as well. Um, 
And then to he, talk about hometown favorites, we've got a couple more. Um, Sage. Sage Northcutt. Um, fighting. Um, I, I'm going to mispronounce this name if I try. Tiba. Tiba Goody. Tib. Uh, I'm going to go. Tiba? Oh, maybe. Yeah. Tibalt Gaudi? I don't know. I don't know. Is he it's Cajun? French. Like, what's the deal? What? What's that? Cajun? No, he's French. He, oh, he's French. Well, yeah. so it's close, right? Cajun, French, whatever. Yeah. So, tip out Goody. Goody. Trying to knows? do it with Cajun accent. Who knows? I, tip out Goody. Don't. Tip out. Just I'm try, stop. I'm trying, man. I'm trying stop. to try. I'm trying. <laughs> tip out. Stop. <laughs> We're just going to call him GT, um, because that's his nickname. Uh, I, should, I should make fun of Louisiana, because they're already getting a lot of flack from Tom Segura's special. So, apparently... Did you watch that yet? No, I have not. Oh, dude. People from Louisiana are, like, instant messaging. Because he did a joke about people from Louisiana, and they're instant messaging him and telling him, like, fuck you. I'm from Louisiana, and I'm not that kind of person. You're a piece of shit. I'm never buying your shit again. And then wow. he's pretending to be, like, he's pretending to be Tom Segura's agent, which, you know, it's Tom on the other end. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. This is Mike, Tom Segura's uh, assistant. Uh, yeah, he's the worst. You know, one time he made me... He, what did he say? He made me, it was just ridiculous stuff like, one time I brought him back coffee and it was too hot. He likes it, he likes it a little bit warm, so I didn't have it the right temperature and he made me sit outside in the cold naked for three hours. Just, just shit like that. It's just really funny. That's, I mean, I don't really know who Tom Segura is. He's a comedian. What the fuck do you mean you don't, you don't know who Tom Segura is? No, I, I gathered he was a comedian. I just, I've never seen uh, anything like oh that Oh my before. god, dude. He's so fucking funny. Anyway, you gotta check him out. It's really good. <laughs> Alright. Duly he's noted. Like, yeah. um, but but GT is, uh, he's got his bachelor's degree from France, by the way. Um, but uh, But uh, he has lost uh, three of his last four. He went on a three-fight losing streak, and then he recently won. His most recent fight was a win against Andrew Holbrook via TKO. Mm. A fight that I did definitely did not see. Um, cool. So yeah, I mean, uh, sounds like they're trying to tee one up for Sage um, to see if they can work him back up, uh, back up the the ranking slowly. That may, maybe slowly this time we'll see. But uh, that's well, he's, fun. he's definitely definitely hanging out with the right people to be a popular. UFC star, you know, Tyron Woodley. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah. No, wait, no, he's hanging out with uh, UI Faber now, so... I mean, oh, is yeah, that who he's hanging out with now? Yeah. Oh, damn. Well, never mind. So, I mean, going on a, on a, on a quick uh, quick detour, uh, Tyron Woodley was in the news last week for, for saying that he was going to fight Nate Diaz for the welterweight title. I'm glad you brought this up, because this is what I was going to ask you about. So keep going. I'll, 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 I'll give you my theory here in a second. Um, okay, alright, uh, so, um, I, first of all, it's ridiculous. It, w it would make sense as a short notice replacement fight, and only as a short notice replacement fight, but it doesn't make sense, frankly. I, I don't completely hate the matchup, which is weird, um, because I think, like, I, I, my, my personal feeling remains that, like, the, 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 the person who can put a pace on Tyron Woodley and keep up a good pace against him will beat him. Um, so, I mean, I think Rafael Dos Anjos probably has a better chance of doing that than Nate Diaz, but whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So what's your theory, AJ? So let's just say in this wild world of WME UFC, WME Zufa, whatever the fuck you want to call it. They're about, you know, they're about numbers. They don't really give a shit about rankings or work or anything like that. They just want they just want money, correct? Right. Uh, and they want more fans. So, crazy, crazy scenario that would be something that I would love to see. And I think casual, drunken fans who have no idea what UFC is would love to see as well. Well, that's the um, demographic they, they want to appeal to, right? Exactly. So, they want to appeal to the people that don't understand anything about fighting. Anyways, um, what about if if they did the Tyrone Woodley Nate Diaz fight, right? Nate Diaz beats Tyrone Woodley for the championship. Okay, he's the welterweight champion currently. They have been talking about stripping Connor for a long time. 
Lots yeah. of people lots of people have been talking about it. I don't know if the UFC is going to go through with it. Let's say they do go through with it, Strickland, right? They all, there's also been talks about Nate and Connor wanting to have a third and final rematch. Nate's the champion at welterweight. It's all hypothetical. They fight again at 170. Connor wins three belts. Never defends a single one. And never defends it. And he just goes out and he just fucking has his clothing brand. He became, he held three titles in the UFC. I mean, why stop there? Why not go for middleweight? Robert Whitaker's up there. He's a striker. Yeah, I think I don't think he can make no way. I think he'd have to eat. I don't think he even walks around that big. I mean, oh right, you have to. Well, no, he only has to be above one seventy, dude. Oh, that's true. I forgot. Yeah, so he, he does walk around that. Yeah. So. But I'm just saying that would be fucking ridiculous. But that's not. <laughs> that is not that far fetched. Well, that see, is not a far fetched thing. Th- this is why the fight makes sense for Nate Diaz. Um, that's exactly why it makes sense because if he loses to Tyron Woodley, who cares? It's up at welterweight. It doesn't affect his standing at lightweight. Right. Um, if he, it, and, and and Dana White keeps saying, "Oh, it's not gonna." The the funny thing is, like Dana White denying it almost makes it more plausible. And Nate yeah. Tyron Woodley pointed out, like, um, like uh, he's like, "Who has a record of being more full of shit, me or Dana White?" <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and um, and like the 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 so it's it's a no risk fight, no risk all reward fight for Nate Diaz because if he happens to win, if he somehow beats Tyron Woodley. Um, which is not completely out of the realm of possibility. Like, I, I, I have a hard time. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Tyron Woodley wrestles him for two rounds and, like, boxes him up for one round and then kind of slows the fight down for the rest of the, the rounds. Or maybe he just holds mm-hmm. him down for all five rounds. I don't know. Uh, but I don't know if Woodley can, can keep up a pace. I don't think he can. He has to slow the fight down. So yeah. if, if Nate Diaz somehow puts the pace on him um, after, you know, after getting beat up or, or taking the power shots... Um, that Willie throws at him, and then like you know. Anyway, if Nate Diaz beats him somehow, that's all. That's all reward. That's all gravy. That's clearly the fight that Conor McGregor is going to come back and take. Obviously, you know. And yeah, uh, yeah no, you're right. Um, and why stop there? Why not go straight up to middleweight? If GSP was still the middleweight title, they probably would have already done that. If GSP, GSP was still the middleweight champion, they probably would have yeah. already done that. Yeah, no, they totally would have. Absolutely, you're right. Um, but um, but what, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's um, that's that's very true. No, it's it's and it's it, yeah. It's just funny when when the 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 UFC president Dana White calls his welterweight champion full of shit, and then Tyron Woodley comes around and says, "Yeah, who has a, who has a worse record?" And it's like, "Oh yeah, no, it's pretty obvious Dana White has a worse record." Yeah. Um. But uh. But yeah. No. So I mean, there's a reason that Nate Diaz hasn't been trying to take fights with Justin Gagey or Eddie Alvarez or any of these lightweights because if he happens to lose to one of those, I mean, those are all tough fights that would, that would cost him his rematch. He wouldn't be in first, you know, he wouldn't be in line anymore. Um, but yeah, welterweight doesn't doesn't matter. So that's why he's trying to fight at welterweight. Yeah. So, um, man, this this has been a Interesting year of fights so far. Um, do you have any any fights that you're looking forward to this coming year? That's oh yeah, been announced? Dustin Poirier versus uh, Justin Gagey that comes instantly to mind. That's cool. Um, obviously, Dan- Daniel Cormier versus Stephen Miocic. Uh, what do you think about the replacement main event, Cyborg versus Yana? Yeah, the Invicta bantamweight champion, the second one she's going to fight. It's fucking annoying because. They're 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 not build, they're not really building the division like they need to be doing. Uh, what division? Uh, the featherweight division. What division? They're, they're, they're exactly what division? They're, well, they're they're not bringing anybody. They're bringing everybody in. Because another, there's no one to bring in. There's no one to bring in. There's no one to say, hey, you could probably make one forty-five, whatever it is. There's there's literally no one to bring in. I, I just I, that's one of the ones like I I don't. I don't really, I don't really know how they would handle that better. The only, I would just rather like to see put put Amanda Nunes in there. Maybe well, after this fight, they that, will. They're gonna do the Amanda Nunes fight, and they should have just fucking done it. I, I don't understand that either. Why they just brought in the, the Invicta bantamweight champion rather than having Amanda fight? It doesn't make sense. To me. Well, probably on short notice, they wanted to have it as a super fight. But, yeah. And, and I don't know. Um, well, but, I mean, do you, well, do, you, do you think people are gonna is, buy this pay per view? They're they're building they're building the one twenty five division. They're they're already having two women's divisions that that I I, I forgot there was one twenty five division I, I completely fucking forgot about it. 
I, I was watching Valentina fight, and she's talking about Nico. I'm like, who the fuck is Nico? Oh, yeah. The 125-pound champion. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I, I just think... They've done a great job marketing her. Oh, dude, I didn't know. I was like, what the fuck Nico is Montana. Um, yeah. And, 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 and Valentina's like, Nico's been dodging me, blah, blah, blah. Or, or, you know, I'm like, who the fuck is Nico? What and, the fuck is she talking about? She wanted to, like, kickboxing or some shit? Right, no. No. That's the that's the twenty one twenty five flyweight women's flyweight. I think I think uh, I think it's just gonna be another shit show. I think that, uh, but but you know what? It's it's this is the way it's gonna be, man. Like women's women's MMA is still evolving. It's still it's not there uh, right now uh, for for that division. So I think it's just the way it's gonna be. Yeah, um, I, I I agree with you. Um, now, who do you have between Frankie Edgar and uh, Brian Ortega, T City? That's a three round fight, by the way. Yeah, I've been watching Frankie since he was on True Life MTV. I'm a mixed martial artist. When he fought Gray Maynard, they documented his training camp and stuff. So I've known about Frankie for a long time. I always pull for him, but. Brian Ortega is really, 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 really good uh, jiu-jitsu. Uh, but doesn't mean shit if it doesn't go there. So uh, I'm going I'm to go with Frankie. Yeah, same thing. Because, I mean, first of all, he's also really good black belt. Really good, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. Brian Ortega um, has... Um, He's not good at winning rounds, um, and if he doesn't, he's he's gotten that submission. He's obviously incredibly good at, at snatching submissions, um, but uh, he he can't keep getting. He's just an opportunist because he's he's not setting anything up. He just happens to get them. Um, I mean, to some extent, he's setting them up, but he's he's there's no process to what he's doing. Right. You know what I mean? Like like it's not it's not a consistent thing. Like he'll be losing a fight. And then someone will shoot a takedown on him and get a submission. Or the Cubs once, and then he jumped for the guillotine from the clinch. But, you know, it, I, I just I don't see that happening against Frankie. If he does, more power to him, man. But I don't right. see I don't see him submitting Frankie Edgar. Right. So, yeah. yeah, I'm picking Frankie in that fight. Yep. And, um, yeah. And then you've got uh, one last contender at Featherweight. So. Yep. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, let's getting back to, to welterweight. Um, this main event between Cowboy and Yancy Medeiros. Um, how, how are you excited for this fight? Like on a scale of one to ten, how? Yeah, how, how no, I'm really excited for it. Medeiros is uh, that, that last fight with Medeiros and uh, the other Cowboy, Cowboy Oliveira was fucking ridiculous. Uh, awesome, it, 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 it overshadowed the Gaethje Alvarez uh, build up. I remember, you, I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah, like it was, it was, it was so good that whenever that fight happened, it did not even compare. It was just like, no, nah, I know this is a good fight, but that fight was that was highlight. Uh, I think Donald, man. I mean, I'm I'm ready to see Donald pick up another win, but also, you know, Yancey's a Yancey's a um, a tough a tough guy as well. I don't know what he's ranked um, right now. I'm not and, sure. Uh, I'm not sure if he's ranked at welterweight or not. Um, but let's see. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't know if he's ranked it or not, but he, uh, he's 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 up there at you know he he um, he beat Eric Silva. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, he's he's won three straight. Um, he beat Alex Oliver, Eric Silva, and Sean Spencer. So those are all three really good wins. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. so I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, I think he could do very well at, at uh, welterweight. Seems to be doing very well at welterweight. Um, so yeah, um, which is really weird. You, you know, he started fighting a light heavyweight. That's crazy. Yeah, he started in he uh, moved down to middleweight and then lightweight. That's that's nonsense. He was a big boy. Yeah. So I mean, hey, good for him, man. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I, this is this is this would be an interesting fight because I mean, Yancy Medeiros is very obviously very willing to sacrifice his brain cells. Uh, for to have awesome fights, uh, yeah. and uh, and he does have awesome fights. Yeah. Um. I mean, he's had. Wow. Look at these performance of the night bonus. One. Uh, fight of the night. Performance of the night. Fight of the night. Um. Performance of the night. Performance of the night. Wow. Um. 
one, two, three, four, five bonuses. And obviously, Cowboy Cerrone has even more. Um, so, yeah, this should be a lot of fun. What are you eating? Are you crack? What is that? What is that? What is what? What are you crackling open over there? I'm not cracking anything open. It sounded like you're opening like a package. It's it might be my beard touching the mic. Well, why are you rubbing your mic up against the beard? My beard is huge right now. I was stretching and it must have, it must have grabbed on my beard. Okay. All right. I gotta I gotta trim my beard. It's like ri ridiculous right now. Yeah, your beard is huge in Japan. Look like I yeah. I look like I I, uh, I look like I, I just got divorced. <laughs> or something. Like, that's how long my beard is. Uh, it's like the um, uh, yeah. Uh, it's like when uh, Joaquin Phoenix um d decided he wanted to rap for a year and a half. Except oh yeah, thing. yeah. I'm I'm not there. Or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, I'm still here. I think it was. Yeah. But literally the opposite of I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not there is the Bob Dylan. Okay. All right. I think. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, well, on that note, um, yeah. AJ, where can the people find you? Find me on uh, Twitter at AJ Herrick, AJ A Y H E R R I C K. Find me on Instagram, same handle. Find me on Facebook, uh, AJ H E R R I C K. Shoot me a friend request. Send me a message. Uh, remember. Tell me who you are and why you're my friend. If I just see some random dude from in Illinois, I'm going to not um, accept that friend request. What if it's like Abraham Lincoln from Illinois? If it's Abraham Lincoln from Illinois, definitely not accepting that friend request. Oh man, why not? Abraham Lincoln was the he's best. dead. The, the, I don't, I don't, I don't like zombies. That's a conspiracy, right, dude. Turn. That's a conspiracy. Abraham Lincoln yeah. is still alive. <laughs> Um, so it's it's uh, assassination gate. That's what they call it. Yeah. No. He. They, I mean. He. He. John Wilkes Booth took his place. Um, never. Never mind. Never mind the fact that that happened almost like 260 years ago. But anyways. It's 160. Dude, you gotta you gotta have your facts straight before you come out on your side. 350 like years ago. Uh, so um, <laughs> all right. So yeah, you can find the real AJ Herrick uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Um. And you can find me at Vorpality, V-O-R-P-A-L-I-T-Y, on Twitter and Facebook as well. And uh, that's it. We are done. We are through. We are out. Peace. AJ, remember when you wanted to name your Twitter handle the real AJ Hair? Instead yeah, of I don't AJ know what the fuck I did that. Well, why would you have? If you could it's secure funny. the name AJ Herrick, why would you? Why would it be the real AJ Herrick? Because it doesn't have to make sense with the social media. And, and speaking of that, my friend, my uncle is the real Ethan Campbell. So, I know that you and I were the best friends for a reason, but I was not able to make a lot of that way. And he did it. So, what can I do?